Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 2nd, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last week, we reported about Showtime being used in order to host client-side JavaScript that would mine crypto coins. The script in particular was created by CoinHive. And I wouldn't characterize the script as malicious, but more the use of the script without informing the user. Now, I do think that video sites are so attractive to these scripts because of course the script will run the entire time that you are viewing the video. The latest instance comes courtesy of Dave Holzer. He found the script on onitube.com in part because it took so much resources from his system that actually on his Mac, it alerted him that Safari took an exorbitant amount of power. On video sites, of course, this may cause also problems with the playback quality if your CPU is busy mining crypto coins and doesn't have any cycles left over in order to decode a video. Now, this recent script from this weekend was heavily obfuscated. The Showtime script, at least the samples that I have seen mentioned uh, from Showtime were not obfuscated. So there was a little bit easier to spot that this was actually a CoinHive script. Now, one thing I noticed with OniTube was that they also had some suspect advertisements for Flash Player updates when I visited with my Mac. So probably not a high reputation site in the first place. And OS X for a while now has marked downloaded files as suspicious and warned users whenever they executed them. That included JavaScript files and the user usually gets a pop-up box telling them that this particular JavaScript file comes from an untrusted source and has to be handled with care. Well, uh, with the last OS X update or Mac OS update, Apple Apple silently patched a vulnerability that could be used to bypass this particular protection. The root cause here was a vulnerability, a cross-site scripting vulnerability in an HTML file that comes pre-installed with Mac OS. This file rhtmlplayer.html will include as part of cross-site scripting vulnerability parameters passed by the user and the attacker can use that to essentially smuggle data into the HTML file and then have it executed because it's just passed as a parameter to the script and the script itself is already on the system and therefore trusted this quarantine protection no longer applies. Pretty simple workaround here. And like I said, Apple silently patched that in the last update. And Duo Security also did a study on the state of EFI firmware for Macs. EFI for firmware is the bias replacement that you find on Macs. And of course it has to be updated like any other software. Vulnerabilities in EFI can be particularly serious because of course any exploit does escape standard validation and anti-malware detection. Now in short, what Duo found was that many Macs do not have up-to-date firmware. The root cause are often that they're running old versions of OS X or they're running old hardware. If you are running, for example, El Capitan or Yosemite, which still do receive security updates, you may no longer receive EFI updates. Also, if you are running a MacBook or an iMac that is several years old, then again, you may not receive EFI updates. On the other hand, if an update is offered, applying it is actually not all that painful. They just look like more or less normal updates. They're being offered via the App Store, just like any other update. You will, of course, typically have to reboot your system. 
That process tends to be more painful for some of the non-Apple systems, in particular the traditional BIOS, where typically there is no alert that you're running an old version. Also, as of macOS High Sierra, which was released last week, the operating system will actually verify the EFI firmware, I believe once a month, and alert you of any unauthorized changes. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.